Ich salute you. How do and welcome back to Pez RC and Hobby and yes, it's still a hit name. Today's episode, we're going to be looking at the uh, jugular uh, little table that I've made. You can call it a table, little gaming arena pit style thing, and um, it worked out pretty well. I think uh, pretty much how I thought of it in my head, which is always a bonus. Uh, without further ado, let's take a closer look. So here we have the uh, finished article, obviously. Uh, I have filmed the uh, build process, so I'm going to show you that after this part. I'm showing you this now finished so that you can judge whether it's interesting to you or not. If you're interested in how I made this, that's coming up next. Um, but essentially, it's uh, it's got magnets underneath here and you can move these are currently it's just three magnets, but I am hoping to find something better and stick the magnet on it um, that looks a bit more in keeping with the theme. And you just slide it to where you want and it tells you what favour you have with the crowd and what effects, uh, combat effects and how many cards you hold in your hand. And it's quite easy to track and there's, there's one on each side and the side with the... Um, faux entrance and exit to the arena I've just split it in two obviously you know because why wouldn't you but it does the same thing um, so it's primarily as you'll see from the video made of an old piece of cheap sort of furniture like a furniture worktop type thing that's hollow uh, and I've cut a piece out got all these pieces of trellis uh, like garden, cheap garden trellis that you'll find in B&M or Wix or somewhere. Uh, some of it's hardwood, some of it's softwood. Uh, and some of it's thicker than others. So I've mixed it all up, cut it to different lengths. Made it look a bit uh, sort of rough rough and ready. And uh, PVA'd it all in. And then I've cut these tiles here out of uh, balsa. Because it's really easy to work with and thin. Uh, and then I've pl placed those in and sanded them up. Just sprayed it with some uh, dark grey and some brown and then put some blood effects in there um, uh, and that's it for now. I might hit this again with some wash. This uh, balsa wood here is really light compared to this and uh, I think it needs a bit of wash with a brush actually and, and the doorway as well is very clean and it shouldn't be. So looking at it now that's what I'm going to do with that. Um, but yeah, I've got all uh, eight of my um, gladiators in here and I am, I am going to buy some more because they're pretty cool. Uh, even if you don't use them in the game, they're pretty cool to paint and uh, have in as, as display. Uh, so tomorrow I will be at the club with this and me and Mark are going to give it a test. We're going to play the game and uh, hopefully I'll get some video of that so you can see the game in motion. If you're interested, look out for that video which should be uh, following this one in the playlist. Anyhow, that's enough of that nonsense. Uh, if you haven't seen it already, um, there's some uh, close-up shots and also the build vlog. Anyhow, thanks for watching. So here we are on, on Sunday, where I thought I'd have a stab at the jugular pit of doom. Um, so I've done my take on it, or started to anyway, but I thought I'd video uh, where I am so far. It's kind of hollow, it's got like cardboard pieces inside it, so I just drilled some pilot holes 
and then manually just hacksawed uh, a piece out of it and I measured it so that rather than being 30 millimeter squares I can potentially go for 35 millimeter squares um, to give me a bit more room um, put a guy in there that's where he stands through the fake doorway and uh, I didn't want these to be too low where it looked like you would be able to just sort of climb out I wanted it to actually look like a pit so um, I put some little dowels in the corners just for aesthetics really just to neaten off the corners there and I've done different sizes of um, this is like trellis that you get this is softwood and this is hardwood although it is very hard um, but it's different thicknesses so I mixed it up and didn't do it uh, all the same length either because I wanted it to look irregular and then I just uh, PVA Gorilla glued it in for now um, and then this is balsa wood from this pile that I've got at my stash and uh, so this is the uh, paper mat that comes with the rule book and obviously you've got the grid so I didn't think there's any point in doing a circular dugout because you're not going to be using uh, the circleness of it <laughs> is that even a term circleness I know it isn't but it is now so I've just gone for being able to hopefully fit it in here with a tiny bit of a, an edge to it um it should be a little bit bigger than that uh, now the edges we have four this is where i have realized my mistake i mean that really could have been up the corner but it would have meant screwing up the aesthetics so we're going to work around that um this is potentially for four players but what i want what i, what I hate about uh things that are just like loose tokens is you always knock them and forget where you are anyway so what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to go from 0 to 10 with magnets. I'm going to countersink them into this side here. And obviously that side's going to have five there and five that side. So we'll have these on here somehow. That's what I've got to work towards after I've done the, the aesthetics, which are kind of getting there now. It's got like a fake tunnel going in. Um, and then I've got to think of a way of creating these uh, this grid pattern. So obviously I want a sand texture and um, I've got to have a grid so potentially it will just be uh, MDF um, either squares that are individual squares like bases or um, it will be one piece of MDF that's etched and then just plonked in and then the sand texture put over most of it I don't know we'll see so here we are a few nights later and um, we've created this part, I don't know, I can't remember what we've done on the last video, but anyway, uh, we've uh, hand cut some floor pieces which are still keep sticking up as they're drying, I've got to keep gluing them down. Um, these are just thin balsa that I've cut to 35mm squares because obviously we need squares in there sadly, otherwise I would have just put sand all over it. Um, I might still put some glue on and um, have some sand in the middle here and there. But obviously I've got to make sure you can see where the squares are as the difficult part. Um, put some sand around the edge. And uh, that's it for now. <clears throat> still got to drill the holes for the magnets and put the magnets in. And decide how I'm going to do the little tokens. Uh, so far I've handmade everything I'm kind of enjoying doing that for a change uh, so I don't know whether I'm gonna try and hand make the uh, tokens well the, the uh, 1 to 10 I don't know how I can do that without it looking a mess but anyway that's where we are so far okay so um, I've put the neodymium magnets in there's 11 so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and the way you do it quickly is you get a drill bit that's the same diameter as your, your magnet. Mark the top or scratch it or mark it with anything you want. 
and you have, you drill the holes and then you put super glue in the holes and then you go you make like, sure that mark is sticking up all the time and you pop one in slide it get a stick level it off push it down rinse repeat and you'll always be the same polarity because obviously you want wherever token you're gonna have to be able to stick to every single magnet in the same polarity you don't want to try and put it on and try and push it off and that's a quick way of doing polarity of magnets so now i've got to decide um now i've got to decide what i'm going to do um material wise for this this is going to have some kind of uh, terrain feature like grass maybe a bit of a worn track area around here as if people have been standing and looking over maybe that would make more sense and then kind of grass area around here like scrub but obviously these parts here have got to be fairly low so that i can put the writing or wherever it's going to be mdf laser etch or whatever i'm going to do with it or, or 3d print pieces are going to be on there uh, to show you uh, what extra attack and what how many uh, extra cards you get in your hand as you go up in favour from the crowd. I'm probably thinking of using like a little Roman coin style thing with a magnet underneath it to show which one you are. I don't know yet, we'll see. I've probably not even spaced them enough. Uh, but I could always put one value above and one value below. That might work better to be fair because obviously I've got to replicate that um, so yeah plus zero five plus zero six etc as it goes up to ten for the Vox Populi but we're getting there we're getting there we're back I've came in what with a uh, solution that I hope will work so I'll put a strip of wood over the magnets so that you can essentially just slide it across and then rather than wasting time drawing and sending card and getting things laser cut and then sent back and then painting them all I thought you know what I'm just gonna these aren't gonna be done yet I'll cut out from this and I'll put them on some balsa wood and then stick them on. Um, so as I'm doing the terrain, the grass and everything around here, I will um, countersink hopefully these into the grass at the correct intervals. Uh, this will have a bit of paint on it. I don't know what I'm going to have attached to these because that will depend on how far these are. So they'll probably be there to be fair. So we can have something that's easier to pick up and move and slide across uh, when your fave with the crowd goes up. Um, so yeah, I've got to decide that before I start to. Uh, it's very satisfying. Before I start to glue things down. Obviously this is glued down uh, and the terrain will be built up around it a little bit but I can't come too high obviously because I don't want this to drag on anything. So yeah, could potentially put another, another coffee stir over the top really, it won't make any difference to the magnetic functionality, make it easier. So if I need to, when I'm putting the terrain on, if I need to, I can always take take it up one more. Um, but so far, so good. Oh, and I've added some sand to the uh, tiles to try and make sure you keep the edges clear. So you can just about make out where the squares are. So now we're at the uh, drying stage. So I've attached all the uh, numbers and a few little... Um, name tags and the I put sort of um, like a 
a more rubbly dark color around the edges and then just like a flock a mix that i've got of just everything that i chuck in a big bucket all the spare stuff so it's a good way of using it on this kind of thing uh the edges are still white and i might keep it white actually rather than going for the black that i was going to originally i wasn't sure so i thought i'd leave it and see what it looks like uh, but i don't think it's too bad to be fair and rather than put like jugular on here i've put it on here because it did hide a few holes that were in there anyway and uh, that's what you can see when you're playing so at this point then we really know what it's going to look like because it's all covered over and drying and you've got to leave it to dry properly um this i've just hoovered up all the loose sand to see what it looks like it needs a bit more i think um or it possibly needs a wash now i think of brown and then a uh, all over light coat of sand just to tie it all together and hopefully we should still be able to see all the all the squares but they're too they're too distinct at the moment and i need them obviously i've got to paint it uh, which will bring it down and unite it at some point uh, but it's still uh, there's still a bit of work to be done on that and these two that's where we are so i've just shaken all the uh, loose grass and stuff off and uh yeah it's not too bad it's it's fairly flat i wasn't going to start putting uh, foam and stuff and carving stuff especially when i need a lot of this room for actual functionality at the moment we just got three magnets and you just uh, move it along to whatever popularity you have with the crowd and uh I like it. I've just sprayed it with some watered down brown paint uh, just to see what it looks like before I start adding more sand. And I think I might leave it as it is, to be fair. Um, I'm not sure. Put more um, glue in there and more sand. It might just completely cover all the squares and just make it a paint to play with, even though it'll look better. So you've got to. You've got to balance it with a fine line really the gladiators look cool in there and this looks like it is actually a pit with the height but still you can see easily you know where where your guys are um it's not like you've got to look completely over to um to get there so uh i might do a few more little details because this needs a bit more Needs a bit more, I think, just a bit of shadowing maybe. Uh, but my airbrush is just locked up, blocked up again, as usual. Um, so um, I've got to clean all that out. And uh, tomorrow, um, Simon can't make the club, so we usually play Sword and Sorcery in the campaign. So we are going to play, me and Mark are going to play... Um, jugular for the first time which means i've got to finish this off tonight uh so it's you know just a bit more detail and then quickly scoop through the rule book and make sure i'm pretty much genned up so i'm gonna to waste too much time tomorrow trying to uh, learn how to play while i'm trying to uh, play it <laughs> so uh yeah i'm pretty happy so far and uh we'll, we'll see where it goes from there
Is this not why you are here? 